7,195 pounds, 23 pack 15 wolf pack here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is an odd duck. It's got a very interesting big kitchen slide back in the open uh, style garage area. And, and you're thinking immediately like, wait a minute, uh, doesn't that cut into my loading space? Well, let's take a look. If we were watching an episode of Family Feud right now, Steve Harvey, you know, he could say, uh, 100 people surveyed, answers are on the board. Question is, if I'm shopping for a toy hauler, and then, uh, you know, what is the number one question that people would ask? And you'd slap the buzzer and you'd ring in and say, what can I fit into it, Steve? And he'd look at the board and go, bing, number one. Number one answer on the board of Family Feud is, what can I fit into this toy hauler? Well, the answer is, quite a bit. I don't know what you got, and there's a hundred million thousand billion different things out there. So I'll give you some specs. From the back of this uh, diamond plate right here, the, the ramp area, up to the furthest loading point, we have 15 feet. Now the golden question, this 15 feet's enough to load pretty much anything. So the golden question is, all right, smart guy, you got a slide out right here. How much room do I have between that slide out floor right there, the furthest sticking out point right there, and over here to this wall? And the answer is 70 and one half inches. I've personally put a tape measure to it more than once to verify. 70 and one half inches wide back there and even wider back in this area. And you can make it even wider still if you decide to flip these beds up against the bottom of the queen bed in transit to regain the extra, I don't know, six, eight inches per side here. So you've got 70.5 inches there. And then you've got uh, basically, what, 98 inches wide back here because this is 102 wide and has two inch thick walls. So there you go. There's the Steve Harvey Family Feud answer on this one. Now, what's kind of cool though, as long as we got the slide out closed, depending on how you load and what you load in here, the kitchen and everything can actually still be very accessible in transit. Depending on what's loaded, maybe you walk in that entry door and you can walk around your thing and get to the refrigerator over here. Maybe you can get to this storage because there, oh, there's lots of storage. We'll see all that in just a minute. But you can most certainly, when you're traveling, stop, hit the bathroom, hit the bedroom. And what I like about this bathroom with its proximity to the entry door, whether you're traveling or you're at a campsite, door, bathroom, out. And it's all linoleum flooring right here. So you're not going to be tracking dirt through the whole RV and the little bit you do, super easy to clean. Then when the slide opens up, we're met with something interesting. We're met with uh, like a rear living room toy hauler which those are words that don't traditionally go together. But it kind of works. I mean, you've got seating in the back, you know, like a rear dinette model, if you will, or rear lounge. We've got a, a couple recliners over here. Now those are optional pieces of equipment, but we have found that in a nice big open model with a big window on the side right here, a lot of folks really enjoy these. Now what's nice is they don't use the same big bulky barrel chairs as you would find in like the, the heart of the uh, you know towable RV industry. Instead they've got these very lightweight, but frankly guys, very comfortable uh, Euro style recliners. And this is one of those things where you look at them and they're, they're not much to look at, but when you sit down, you instantly go, ooh, ooh. I mean, it, it matters. Now, your uh, this is your little, uh, you know, um, reclining end that sort of kicks up right there. You've got all sorts of different, like, tension tighteners, so if you wanted to rock more or less, you can do that. It does swivel in place, which is nice because that'll keep you from kind of, like, scuffing up your uh, flooring or anything like that. Um, so those are optional. Uh, what's nice, too, is they're lightweight, so if you really need to kind of move them around, you can very simply and easily. Now, if you notice, I uh, probably hinted at this earlier. I have I got interrupted a couple times between video segments, but you see D-ring tie-downs all the way up to the front of that cabinet. So there are uh, about 10 or 11 in here, and there would actually be more if it weren't for the fact that the slide would cover where two of them would be. But it, that actually, in a way, is confidence-inspiring to me because somebody at the factory level, instead of saying, yep, just keep doing the D-rings, like we've always done, boys. They went, wait a minute, no, 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 we don't need two there. So someone actually had the presence of mind to understand how this floor plan functions in and out. And as dumb as that sounds, guys, that's not always the case in this industry. So real quick, let me back up. I'll 
like almost every toy hauler under the sun has these. Most folks are familiar with them, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We've got our queen bed in the power lift back here if you uh, need that extra sleeping space. Or pull the mattress out, and congratulations, you've got yourself a built-in like cargo tray. Now, what you are seeing right here is you can leave these little pins in and leave the bed in the up position so that if you do want to drop these sofas, like right now I, I just dropped them like 12 inches to kind of show you how they can ride sideways um, like this against the walls to give you maximum load height if you have those tall side-by-sides. Or what you can do if you don't need the maximum height is they can flip out and they can ride horizontally so that you can get maximum load width in this 102 wide body toy hauler. So you kind of get the best of both worlds here. Now when it is down in the seating position, you do have your handy little like, um, oop, which side am I grabbing right there? There we go. Little theater seat style armrest that you can kick out if need be. If you are looking for more of that dual lounge bench scenario. This is dovetailed for, um, with the light just blaring down on this thing. It's a little difficult to see, but if you look right over in that area, you can actually see how the floor dips down. That is so that, you know, when you're loading that nice Goldwing or Harley, you don't rip the pipes off your bike because <laughs> that's, that's a bad day at the office. Now your kitchen slide over here, this kitchen, I mean, for, first of all, let me just stand back. This kitchen has a lot of good storage going on in it. There is a deceptive amount of storage. When you first walk in here, you're like, eh, okay. And then you start opening stuff up and everything is big. Everything is deep. Not an ounce of this is wasted. Um, eight cubic foot fridge freezer over here is 33% bigger than what you typically find in a wood skeleton travel trailer toy hauler. Um, our countertops. This stuff is called thermofoil. And what it is, first of all, it's a sealed edge. That's the main thing. So that water can't, you know, if you splash water around this water source or anything, um, the water can't get in here and, and swell anything up and cause problems. You may have noticed from my little previous video snippet, we've got that uh, big stainless, this is called a farm sink, the giant one basin sink. High rise faucet up here. And listen, guys, not plastic. You can hear the difference between plastic and metal when you do the wedding ring test. They are using better fixtures here. That's really who these guys are. If, uh, you know, like, what what is a wolf pack? What makes this thing tick? Why would you buy this compared to something else? That's the whole goal of this video is to help educate you on questions like that. Well, wolf pack is literally just, it's at the end of the day what it is, it's the Cherokee toy hauler. Cherokee is the uh, number one selling thing from Forest River and growing like weeds in the marketplace. Number two overall and steamrolling up very quickly onto the number one, which is the uh, J-Flight like we also have here at Halet RV. They're both great in different ways, but what these guys did is they said, okay, there's lots of beautiful, big, awesome toy haulers out there, but not everybody is, is ready for retirement. Not everybody's ready to sink 50, 60 grand into a travel trailer toy hauler. So what they did is they said, there's, there's nothing wrong with laminated construction like that cougar over there. There's nothing wrong with uh, stick-built construction like this Springdale over there. The difference, though, is that is less money. So what if we kept all of the fun features of a laminated trailer in a stick-built trailer? And voila, that's, that's it. That's the business plan, guys, and it's working well. And their quality control has really drastically improved over the last couple of years. This RV arrived with a completely clean arrival sheet. Normally we can find at least one little nick or gouge or something somewhere. This was as close to flawless as we've ever seen. Out of what you would often refer to as an entry level product. Well that's not a normal expectation for something in this market, but these guys are getting it done. They're just getting the job done. Um, this is a convection microwave down here, by the way. So you can do some baking in that. It cooks faster, and it introduces less heat into the RV. And those are two excellent features, obviously. Central AC uh, and double bank LED lighting, which is nice. Now, the lights aren't seemingly terribly impressive right now with this rear tailgate open and the morning sun billowing lots of ambient light in here. But that's also kind of a neat thing. I actually debated even turning the lights on. Um, I wanted folks to see that there are double rows of lights, but there's so much natural light in here that if you're at a campsite or something, especially if you're boondocking, you're not going to have to kill your battery running the lights in this thing. And they never wasted an ounce of storage space. Everything in here is as big as it could be. Your main big patio window, uh, your wolf packs use these nice uh, wooden like plantation style blinds. What I like about those compared to pleated nightshades is you can clean those things. You can actually just get them clean. Now, anywhere that you sit or sleep in anything in the Cherokee family, you're going to find both 12 volt powered USB outlets and you see how that little green light indicator is on right now? I'm only hooked up to a little 12 volt jumper pack like you'd use to jump start a car. These 
are 12 volt operated when you're boondocking. Now, household outlets require 110 shore power, so keep that in mind. So you're going to want a generator or something for that. But we are gen prepped, and we'll talk more about that as we go outside. Um, again, the morning light blasting through here. I don't know how much you're going to be able to really draw from, uh, you know, or take a look at when we do this little rear view, because just like that, it'll start to get dark. But I thought I'd give you a nice quick once over. Moving forward here, other little detail things, guys. Like, these are your outside light switches. All your light switches, really, they're all backlit, and that seems like a small thing. That's not like a $5,000 thing or anything like that. But when you wake up at night, it does a couple things for you. One, you can see where all your switches are if you want to turn lights on or off. But two, it also kind of gives you a marker point. It's it's a uh, it's like a lighthouse beacon. It's a, for a ship in the night. If you're walking out of the bathroom or bedroom at night and it's dark, you can see where these switches are, and you know by reference I can reach over here and touch the counter, and then I can kind of feel my way through everything without waking everybody up by turning on the lights. It's little stuff like that is handy. Look at look at the outlets and everything over there. Phone chargers, household outlets, household outlets. Now there there's something that a lot of laminated trailers cannot do. Put uh, household outlets on the face, the outside wall of a slide out. That is something that a lot of laminated trailers cannot do without some really expensive extreme measures. So like I turn the lights off. Does it look any darker in here? I don't think so. I think it looks great. Entertainment center in here is also kind of a little pleasant surprise. Um, if you uh, feel like throwing a TV in here, you're good to go. And it's supremely visible from all of the living area. So, I mean, it's just everything in this RV... I don't know if it was the intention or not, but dang it if it doesn't just work. And something I don't talk about enough anymore, because it used to be like almost every RV had it, is roadside assistance. And actually, Forest River and its subsidiaries, um, I think along with Winnebago, they're just about the only brands left that uh, still offer roadside assistance the first year of ownership with their customers. Um, I think that's a big deal, because, you know, this is a, a big rig, especially first-time RVers. Maybe there's things that you're not aware of or not experienced with, and uh, having that extra layer of protection, that extra security blanket wrapped around you to, uh, you know, make your uh, first year of ownership simple and easy, that is nice. Foot flush stool here in this very large fifth wheel size bathroom. Look at all the open floor space in here. Plus, you have a huge sink with extra countertop space. Notice that the countertop around here is the same as in the kitchen, sealed edge. Massive vanity up here, so you can actually keep like your toothpaste and toothbrush in here. The same giant Max Air vent fan in here that you have in luxury size fifth wheels. With this being a travel trailer toy hauler, um, not a crossover like it's Little Brother Grey Wolf, but a full true toy hauler. We have just monstrously tall shower in here. You're never going to have a problem with that. Now, a little thing they did that I love, again, where they're really good here is uh, they say, well, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be expensive to be effective. They added what is basically a second extra large medicine cabinet, but it's so big you could easily roll some towels up in there and stack them in what I call burrito style. But at the same time, I like burritos, and that's just me. Moving on. Here's another thing that's great about this. It's just got a bedroom. Like, a real, normal bedroom. Like, even the same, you know, dressed headboard or anything up here. They have, uh, you know, made sure that they nailed every little detail that matters. Now you have individual click-on lights right above the bed. And then, bang, light switch for the walls above the bed. Um, the, the walls above the bed. Mmm, this is just, just, mmm, 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 walls above the bed. That's, that's... It's it's early guys, and if I don't if I seem kind of flat and monotone, you know I am sorry. Um, woke up about eleven o'clock last night with a sick kiddo, and that stayed uh, about every fifteen minutes. Uh, you could set your watch by it if we're synchronizing watches until about four a.m. So if I'm a little off today, it's because I'm giving it all I got, Captain. You know, and this is all she's got. So anyway, we have a switch for the lights above the bed there we go okay i got it finally it, you get the point that's not normal in a lot of trailers you know but it's it's handy because this is a very tall camper now i'm 6'3 and i got long arms so i can reach that to turn it off and on but my wife couldn't so they gave her a switch now we can reach those anybody can reach those my daughter could reach those so those don't need a switch so again they put everything that matters where it belongs now check out the size and the depth of that overhead cabinet. That's not just the illusion of storage. That's legit, ladies and gentlemen.
legit. Easy walk around bed, nice full length hanging closets, and you'll find that we have household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, just like we have all over in the living room. Interesting location to me for the battery disconnect, but at the same time, I actually think it's kind of smart because it's away from the weather, it's protected from shifting cargo, it's in an area that it can't be broken or fail. So, at the same time too, because you can walk in the door and you can get right over here, you're never blocked off from it. You never have to like unload or open anything to get to it. So it's just very simple. And if you do feel like throwing a TV in the bedroom over here, bang, they got the perfect place and the hookups for it. There's something about the look of this thing too. It's, uh, it's simple, but industrial. Like it has a ruggedness, a quality about it. I can't exactly put my finger on, but it's appropriate. It feels right. And I don't know how else to say other than it just feels right. Now, just like on the inside, instead, what they did is, remember how we said they took all the money it cost to make a laminated RV, and they moved that money into everything you can see, feel, and touch, like these awesome uh, more ride adjustable stable steps right here. So the step above more ride steps, people have been at, started adding these aftermarket to their campers. They're awesome. You've got the adjustable foot pegs here, so this thing can marry up with just about any campsite you can possibly imagine. And what's great is even without the jacks down, the camper does not rock and roll around. Now I left the door open here because I forget to talk about this on a lot of Wolfpack models. It's kind of breezy right now. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you notice how the door's not doing anything. This is a uh, basically an anti-wind slam door with a friction hinge. Now what's kind of cool is you've got a couple little set screws in each of these hinges. If you want more or less friction uh, for more or less ease of opening, you can do that. Uh, another thing I often forget to talk about on these is right up front here, they always have, all Wolfpacks are going to have a, uh, a little outside grill quick connect. And I mean, it, it just makes, if you're going to be boondocking, you want to be cooking outside, you don't want to add all that extra heat and like uh, humidity and stuff inside. It already, it feeds right into the propane bottles that you already have built into the camper. You don't have to lug along extra propane bottles. And I don't know, unless you feel like it. Now up front here, They've got a pretty good storage compartment. It actually does go under the bed, and it's actually extra tall in here because of the uh, ability for this to have a generator added, which is, that's what we're looking at over there. That's the heat shielding for the generator so that, you know, it doesn't boil you to death at night because obviously that would be something like from some creepy Michael Myers Halloween film we don't want to get involved in. This table right here, can go anywhere. It can do anything you want. You can throw it between the uh, the twin little sofa benches and the power bed lift in the back. You can leave it outside uh, on the patio deck if you want. And just like the countertops, this is thermal foil, so water is not going to deteriorate and rot this stuff out. This these little coil hoses, these things are pretty cool. Now here's a great example. I talk about it all the time, but these guys actually include it. The attachment here, this little fitting, this little air hose style simple fitting. It doesn't look like much, but the advantage here, guys, is that it has a residential fitting on the end of it. So if you want to put any sort of little handy hose sprayer on it, you can. Um, little detail stuff like this, too, is easy to miss. LED tail and marker lights. Because at a glance, you've got the same marker cap here that you have on anything else. But it's an LED bulb inside so that you have uh, greater longevity, better visibility, all kinds of stuff. Now, also, right above that uh, light fixture I just tapped on is your, your simple outside solar prep. So if you are boondocking and you want to keep those batteries uh, kind of functioning so you do have that extra light at night, uh, you're going to be good to go. Power tongue jack, uh, you know, just does all the heavy lifting for you because this thing is fairly heavy, especially once you got it loaded. Now, a big thing to talk about is this is 102 wide body. This is max width wide body to give you maximum living and loading space. Uh, so again, those big toys, even when that slide's closed, you're going to be good to go there. Um, gen prep. One of the things that you can add to these wolf packs, very rarely do we have someone in the Midwest anyway. I'm sure it does vary greatly by region in the Southwest and the West. Uh, a lot of folks are like, yep, get that generator in there. And I, I get it, because uh, here in the Midwest, a lot of folks park camp. In the uh, Southwest, out West, in the desert areas, people tend to desert camp and you're boondocking. But it is all here. And there's different levels of gen prep guys. They go pretty far with the heat shielding, with the wiring pre-run and everything. Generator prep doesn't actually always mean prep for a generator anymore. And I hate that. It drives me crazy. Um, there's a couple really impressive facets right here that are very easy to miss that I want to hit on. So you have 
two different outside sprayer things. We already looked at that little coil sprayer hose. This is a cold water only spray port if you're just going to clean some fish or if you're going to hose down your toys or something like that. But this is a hot cold outside utility shower if you need to hose down people. If they're filthy from like you go mudding or something like that and you need to get yourself cleaned off before you go jumping in the RV, well you can do that here. Um, also black tank flush right here and over in this area separate cable and satellite hookups. That is not something a lot of RVs do. And again, we're finding really cool, smart features here on what would traditionally be referred to as an entry-level product, quote-unquote. Now, outside storage being at a somewhat limited premium, they don't want you to get, you know, sick and listeria, diphtheria, and every other theria out there. So they give you a nice little sewer hose caddy back here, away from anything else in the camper, any from any other storage. That way, your sewer stuff isn't mingling around with your, uh, you know, fresh water stuff or your camping chair stuff or any other stuff. They don't want that stuff mixing with other stuff. George Carlin would be happy about this bit. He did a lot of bits about stuff, but I digress. Patio party deck feature on the back here. Historically, it was something only available on laminated products. And uh, your uh, Forest River Cherokee family toy haulers like this wolf pack, they were really the driving force that pushed this more toward the um you know the classical uh wood skeleton construction series like this now you do actually have the option of putting a fiberglass skin on the outside of this guys but understand what you're doing there is you're increasing weight you're increasing cost um uh, you are but what you're getting is a nice look for it um the reason it increases weight is because you don't actually exchange the uh wooden skeleton uh and below the fiberglass skin you actually have what effectively uh is a three-eighths um plywood sheet below it because you have dual layer um offset luon sheets laminated below the fiberglass option so if you do choose to add the fiberglass option, which we don't traditionally stock, but we are more than happy to order for you guys, um, understand it'll be a little more weight, a little more money, but it does have a pretty good look to it. It just it just depends. Um, the uh, patio party deck back here, back to that thing, I got distracted. It has a 3,000 pound load limit. We are rated for 1,500 pounds in the patio position, so 3,000 pounds when the deck is touching the ground here. Um, simple, easy setup. What I like about their, their ramp gate system is that it actually attaches to the door frame of the toy hauler. It's not actually attached to the ramp door of the toy hauler, so it's not incredibly heavy and difficult to manage. Backup camera ready, big old loading floodlight. Uh, you know, everything on this is designed to, it's got everything it needs. Uh, they, they didn't cut a corner. They did everything very effectively here, really. Um, outside uh, fueling stations, they seem to vary by location on different brands. I've never really determined if it's better on one side of the trailer or the other. I think it's one of those things that some people like vanilla and some people like chocolate, and that's just the way of the world. So whatever doesn't bother me the fact is it's here now what's kind of cool about this is if uh you want to you know if you're going to be doing some dune riding or something and you don't want to make a, a gasoline trip to town well you got this built right in here but a lot of folks have gas engines in this market segment not everybody is driving a diesel at this point it kind of god forbid you you go driving too long you could actually siphon gas out of your uh toy hauler for a, uh, a gas engine vehicle so, I mean, there, there are some interesting backup plan options there. Um, the awning has LED lights under it, but it's also got LED lights behind the outside speakers as a member of the Cherokee family. I don't have the power on right now, but these little things right here will glow. Not amazingly bright at night, but it, it just kind of, again, it's that little visual thing. It's just a nice little aesthetic. At the time of this filming, they just transitioned over from mag wheels to actual aluminum wheels. So basically, they went uh, to full aluminum wheels versus like simulated aluminum wheels. And these little guys right here, these little tire pressure indicators on the valve stems, they'll flip from green to red if that tire is low. And the reason I think that's cool is because improper tire inflation is actually the single number one cause of flat tires in the towable RV industry, probably in the whole industry of anything related to tires, but um, I don't, you know, I'm not a tire shop. I'm an RV shop and I know how it relates to RVs. So at a glance, you can see if your tires are properly inflated instead of guessing if they're properly inflated. And it just, it saves time, it's ease, it's convenience, and it's super functional. So we've covered a lot on this. 
there's a lot more to cover. Like, I, you know, I didn't even talk. Let me give you a, uh, just a real fast blast down the structure of this. We've got uh, 5 8 uh, floor decking with 12 inch on center floor studs. We have an average of 12 inch on center wall studs in an industry that typically has 16 inch uh, wall studs, uh, on center wall studs, pardon me. Now, some are going to be closer, some further. It averages out to 12 inches on center, so it's got a really hefty skeleton. Uh, you've got uh, 5 inch arched roof trusses set every 16 inches apart with a 3 8 full walk on deck. You can get all over this. Now, something I didn't talk about earlier, too, is the nose. This has a smooth uh, aluminum nose skin. That is not a, and notice guys that it didn't go wobble, wobble, wobble. You know, it didn't bang around. That's because this is an extra thick aluminum, basically exactly as thick as the diamond plate, except this is a nice smooth painted white. So it's very visual pleasing while this is here to do a job of deflecting stones. And that's why it's got the little, uh, you know, uh, deflectors and whatnot and all the cool little diamond shaped stuff. Well, as a, compared to a, a less expensive fiberglass nose, an untreated fiberglass nose that could have oxidation issues, you're going to have to really, really neglect this to see some heavy uh, oxidation and sun fading on the exterior. Now, my Arizona, Florida, Texas friends, yeah, you get more sun than I do. I'm aware of that. But you're probably used to that, and you're probably aware of the fact that you need to maybe... Uh, use a wash and UV inhibitor on the outside of your camper two or three times a year instead of one or two times a year like we do out here. I think that's just one of those things that people in different parts of the country are accustomed to certain things like that. So if you would like to learn more, because there is still plenty more to learn, give us a call guys. 800-256-5196. We're Halet RV in Coldwater, Michigan. We do everything with the exception of hidden dealer fees. We do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun and happy camping, everyone.